you begin to understand the power and the glory of this wild place. Last spring, I traveled the length of the Grand Canyon on the most beautiful and exciting river on this continent, Colorado. It's hard to believe that this beautiful place, this gift, was nearly lost. But in the 1950s and 60s, the government planned a series of dams that would have flooded much of the Grand Canyon and choked the Colorado to a trickle downstream. It would have happened, except for a few who said, no, not here. One of the people who stood up for the river has become my friend. Martin Litton, 77, still rose his dory through the canyon. It was Martin in the canyon that brought me here. My name is James Taylor, and this is how I got to know Martin Litton and the Grand Canyon of the Colorado. through the Grand Canyon for the last 40 years. He started the first commercial dory company in the 1960s. But more importantly, for the last half century, Martin Litton has stood at the front of nearly every environmental battle in the West. Rarely a figurehead for any movement, Martin nevertheless offered the courage and uncompromising spirit that fueled a righteous fire. When I heard that Martin, recovering from some serious surgery and pushing 80, was planning to take his boat through the canyon again, I headed west. There isn't much wilderness left in America, and not many heroes. I had a few weeks to get to know a man and a place that stood apart from the rest of our lives. My trip with Martin began at Lee's Ferry, Arizona. Five dories and a support raft, a crew of seven, 15 passengers, including me and my son, Ben. I'm named Aha. That's me, old man, sitting in a boat, that is. Ben was making his own video diary of the 18-day trip. There's Martin getting on the, on the boat next to us, getting something ready. Whatever it is he's doing, he is, he is the man as far as these river expeditions are concerned. He's been doing this forever. And uh, we're thrilled to be going down there. We'll travel 277 miles through the canyon to the headwaters of Lake Mead. So, Emily, you all set? Yeah, how many people we got? Okay, it's the four of us. Okay. For most of us passengers, this is a first-time experience on white water, and we're wondering just how risky it is. There have been uh, half a dozen deaths on the river. Statistically, Crystal Rapid uh, sets the record for fatalities. Uh, there have been... Uh, 
uh, two deaths with big rafts that I know of uh, in Crystal. Uh, other rapids that have claimed their lives are uh, House Rock, another big rig up above, and uh, Lava Falls has a record of at least two. Uh, you know, we could be very uh, morbid thinking about these things, but uh, we don't. This is a place of life, not death. The canyon is really full of joy, and uh, it frightened the early people who came through because they didn't know what was ahead, and uh, it tended to be man against nature in those days, and we had to conquer this thing. Today, we go with the flow. It's uh, a beautiful experience, an uplifting experience, and once you get used to it, it's just nothing but fun. People are reassured after a few days in the white water. In fact, it's the white water, and the bigger the waves, the better. The white water is what makes the trip fun. There's still a healthy respect for the river. Martin has planned his trip well. He has with him some of the best boatmen around. Together, they count nearly 100 years of whitewater experience. Lou Steiger, Mary Williams, Dougal Bremner, trip leader Kobe Jordan, and Eric Jodan. These are veterans who know the river well, according to Martin, better than he does. They all seem to be having fun, but the rest of us aren't so sure. The white water here is 46 degrees. And when Ben and I flipped the inflatable kayak, fun was not the first word that came to mind. morning on the river, we're faced with incredible beauty and the prospect just downstream of some major rapids, House Rock and the Roaring Twenties. The boatmen sleep late. Most of us are slow to stir. Martin was up and ready to go. One way or another, he had had an influence on everyone who rode a dory on this river, and he continued to set the standard. Yeah, I think it's definitely something that I can do, at least till 77. I mean, Martin's kind of setting the, he's sort of setting the upper limits of, of how long you can keep doing this. You know, so many of us wouldn't be involved in this if it wasn't for Martin yeah. doing this. You know, I mean, he's the one that started it all, and he's the one that, um, you know, I mean, as far as commercially running dories here and, and made it possible for all of us to be involved in this on a regular basis. Dories aren't the only boats on the river. There was a wide variety of craft before dories were introduced, and many developed since. People have traveled the river on rowboats and scows, jet boats and kayaks, and, of course, rubber rafts. I worked for years and years for a motor company, and uh, I, I remember seeing Martin... Um, seeing the dories the very first year I ever went to work down here. And for me, you know, um, ever since the minute I first saw a dory, I always wanted to row one. I always wanted to be in one. It was in the 1960s that Lytton began Grand Canyon dories. The boats he designed with P.T. Riley were direct descendants of the first craft on the river over a hundred years ago. But they were very different from what had become the more popular mode of transportation in the canyon. Today, nearly 20,000 people a year take motor rafts through the canyon, a trip that takes just eight days. Any trip through the canyon is a good thing, but Martin thinks you should take your time, pay your respects. Martin, in a very quiet and uh, and kind of diffuse way actually raised the level of environmental consciousness in the river community down here 
and also in an aesthetic sense he raised the level of technique they are beautiful the doors are are, are lovely looking boats I and mean, it's such a quiet peaceful sort of uh, uh, organic way seemingly to, you know to go down the well you've down noticed the how they sail up and over the waves and, yes and <laughs> sometimes over that even you know. So our river bags are packed. A duffel line forms, and our day on the river is about to begin. Yes, we are gather at the you know you're on this boat and if the boat works then you survive and it's clear what's important and what's not it also requires that you be fit if you you be aware that you be sober it's it's really you know it's sort of a, a form to be in it's a very simple life uh in a way it, it's simple because it's so structured like we're on the river we're going we're only going one way we're going with the water we got these walls around us there aren't we don't have forks in the road you know all we have are we just have the river and we have these challenges that come up along the way but but we're forced to meet them you know we get to a bad rapid and we do get to bad rapids that we don't even want to run <laughs> No, I mean, there's times when you when you you'll get to a place and you'll think, boy, you know, I wish I I was anywhere but here.